Hello, and thank you for watching. I'm Jennifer Bowman with Olympia Piano, and this is holiday harmonization number seven. In this video, we're going to be harmonizing Away in a Manger, and I'm gonna show you a beautiful broken chord arrangement for the left hand for this video. I think you'll get the most out of this video if you're able to watch the Harmonization 101 video where you learn how to find all the chords that go with the various solfege syllables and then print out this solfege chord finder. The link to the download is in the description, as is the link to this sheet music and this lead sheet. So I would recommend printing out all of those and following along. The other thing I wanted to mention for this video, we're just gonna harmonize with the primary chords and primary chords are the one chord. So in this case, C chord, the four chord, and the five chord. So we're gonna eliminate some of the more colorful choices for this video because of the left hand pattern that I am going to show you. But that does not mean if you know how to figure out your harmonizations already that you can't use some of the other chords to harmonize. I just won't be addressing them in this video. So this video is gonna be organized into three parts. Part one, we're going to take the melody and choose the harmonizations using the Soulfish Chord Finder. Part two will be the accompaniment figure. It's going to be an arpeggio figure for this video. And I'm gonna show you two ways to do the arpeggio, which will take a little bit more time. And part three will be transferring the chord harmonies to this lead sheet here, accompanying in the key we've already practiced and transposing to any key. Before we get started with the harmonization, I'm just going to quickly go over the fingering I like to use for this piece. So I start with finger five here on G. And then switching to finger four so we don't run out of fingers. Staying here for a while. And then stretching up just a little bit to second inversion position. Resetting pinky up on G. Again, switching to four. Now stretching to F here. Stretching a little bit down to A. All right, so now we are ready to harmonize. And the first step for harmonization is writing in the solfege syllables for the melody. So all of my examples are in the key of C. So in the key of C, we have G, high G is so, so take a minute and fill in all the syllables for the piece. All right, now that your soulfish syllables are in, we're gonna choose one chord per measure to harmonize this piece. We're not gonna choose a chord for this pickup note, just one beat in this measure. So we'll start choosing here on the so. And remember, for this video, we're just gonna use the primary chords, one, four, and five. So if you've watched some of the previous videos, usually we're trying out three chords per syllable. This time there might be one or two per syllable. So let's look up so. So we have either a one chord or a five chord. And I'll do two measures at a time. So we'll try the one chord first. So the one chord sounds great. Let's try the five chord. Let's try five going to one. can hear that for both of those measures it's going to be the one chord it's the only one that works and now we've got do here so our choices for do are going to be one or four so i'll play the whole line i'll play one 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 then i'll play one one four one 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 works okay now let's try one one four Four sounds really pretty right there. The one does work, however. The four is just a little bit more interesting. So I'm gonna say that both of them work and circle the four. And then the one definitely works here. Our other choice for so of primary chords again, just one, four, and five is the five. So I'm gonna try one, one, four, five. So we already know one, one, four, one works. does not really work. So let's take a look at line three. 
is the same as line one. So I'm going to put those same chords in for line three. Okay, let's go back now to line two. We've got a so here, two choices for so, one or five. I'll start at the end of line one, the last two measures, and we'll try out one first, then we'll try out five. Okay, that's one, doesn't really work, so let's try five. Five definitely works. Okay, we have another so. So we'll try five going to one and five going to five. One does not work for that second measure. And let's try five, five. And that works great. If you look carefully, you'll see that these syllables are all in the five chord. So, so, re, ti makes a five chord. So that's why the five sounds so good. So next we have la. And we have a couple things going on here. We could go with the pure on the la syllable, which would be a four, or we could take these two syllables as being part of the same chord, in which case it would be one chord, so and do. And we could have this note just not belonging to the harmony, however, leading to it. So I'm gonna first try a four chord here, then I'm gonna try a one chord. We'll figure out which one sounds better. chord sounds excellent and now let's try the one chord so I think either of them work the four is a little bit more colorful I think I'm going to go with the one just for the sake of simplicity though so with a five five one one let's go to the last line line three is the same We've already done it. So fa, our primary chord choices are going to be four or five, seven. So let's try both of those. We'll try the four first and I'll start two measures before. Four works okay, but let's try the five, seven. Five, seven is stronger especially we have that seventh as the interval in the melody. That's also kind of an indicator. That's which chord's gonna sound good there. And then we've got me, our choices for me, primary chords, one chord. Let's make sure the one chord sounds good. The one chord sounds good. We have re here. Ray, we have one primary chord choice, and that is a five chord. So let's check that and make sure that sounds good. The last one's going to be a one, by the way. In these simpler harmonic pieces, you're usually going to end on a one and start on a one. So now I'll try the five for the Ray, and I'm going to do the five seven because we already had a five seven on that line. Let's see how that sounds. Here it is without the five seven. I like the five seven better. All right, so we are done with the harmonization. And now what we're going to do is create the accompaniment pattern. In the previous video, Silent Night, we explored a broken chord pattern in root position. So five, three, one for C or five, three, one for F, five, three, one for G, all in quarter notes. So it's a little bit of a slower pattern. This pattern is going to have two differences. The first difference is that the notes are going to be more quick. We're going to do eighth notes instead of quarter notes. So there will be two notes per beat. So six notes in total for the pattern. And the pattern is an arpeggio instead of just a broken chord. So the difference is we'll add another note of this chord harmony on the top. So we'll have C, E, G, and another C and then coming back down. So we'll be up and down one octave arpeggio. And six notes, we'll have one, two, three. And then in the next measure, we'd be ready for the root of the chord, whether it's the one chord or another chord. So the way it's gonna work for the one chord, C, E, G, C, G, one, down to F, same pattern.
pattern. And then when we want to go back to C, scoop back over. So the first round will be root position only. Then I'm gonna show you an alternate way to do this, which would be using chord inversions. So let's do the root way first. So we'll start with the root position arpeggios and notice we're going to have six eighth notes per measure so three of those eighth notes are going to go with this dotted quarter so we'll have c e g then one eighth note with that one and then back down and this next measure two eighth notes per quarter note and i usually will beam them or group them together two at a time six can be a little bit confusing for lining them up with the melody. Now we're going down to our four chord. This is gonna be root positions. We're gonna go down to F, same thing. Two notes per right hand note. So F, A, and then back to our one chord. Four notes go with that half note. Line two, so just G here. So again, dotted quarter note, three eighth notes with that. Two of those, now two notes per quarter note. And then back to our one chord for two measures and then fill in all of line three here. Now, to that five seven, we could put that seventh on top. So now we'll have three notes, G, B, D, then our seventh will be the top, going with that eighth note right there. One chord, C arpeggio, five seven again, and then just ending with a block chord, not an arpeggio. So let's play through that version. So again, this is a root inversions only. For this fingering, for this left hand, it's going to be five, four, two, one. And then you'll have the hopping around with the pinky when you are switching chords. And we'll keep the one chord up here, the four chord and the five chord will go down. So let's go through slowly the root position one octave arpeggio accompaniment. Three notes with this note, then together, two notes, then two notes, two, two. Now both hands are going to switch. Right hand's going to switch to finger four. Left hand's going to hop down to F, which is the four chord. Two notes per right hand note. Now right hand is going to just stay where it is. Left hand's going to pop back up to C. Four notes with that first G. And then two notes, pinky pops down to G. Three notes, together, together. Now two notes per melody. Now hopping up to C, back to the one chord. Stretching out a little bit. One to F, one to G, three notes, back up to the one chord in the left hand, down to the five, seven, so without stopping, it would sound like this, add some pedal, Change the pedal once per measure. I just love this piece. It sounds so pretty with the pedal. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you an alternate left hand accompaniment. And what we're gonna do in this one is we're gonna have the left hand positions be in inversions for the four chord 
and the five chord. The one is gonna stay in root position. So we'll do the one exactly the same. So when we're looking for an alternate position, we wanna find which notes do the chords have in common. So when we're dealing with a one chord and a four chord, both of those chords share a C or a Do. So what we wanna find out is which four chord has the C on the bottom. So we have the root position, we have the first inversion, and we have the second inversion. So you can see right away, second inversion has the Do on the bottom. So we're gonna move from this arpeggio to this for the four chord. So just scooting these notes up, keeping that C on the outside. And when we play this one, you use finger three for the four chord. So that's what we're gonna use right here instead of having F on the bottom. And you can kind of mix and match these. Once you get good at this, sometimes the inversions might work well, and sometimes the root positions sound better. So you can develop your ear and figure out what works best for what you're trying to accomplish. So we use finger three right there. This will be finger four. All right, in a similar fashion, we're moving between the one chord and the five chord. You see, they both share the G or the so. So what we've got to try to find now is the five chord that has the so on the top. So here's our root position. Here's our first inversion, and there it is. So for this one, the bottom is gonna go down. Then back to our one chord, root position for that one. Line three, same as line one. Keeping that C as the bottom note, even though we're switching to a different harmony, four chord harmony. Okay, now we're going from the one chord to the five seven. So let's take a look at what might make sense for this. We've got our one chord. Again, the one and the five seven share the G. So here's our five seven chord do first inversion of that, we're going to put this G on top, or so on top, and that's what we're going to get. Really pretty sound. So instead of having three different notes, we have four different notes. B, D, F, G. B, D, F, go with that first dotted quarter note, then G with the me, and then F, D two notes this time per right hand and then two notes per right hand we'll start with the c here root position one chord first inversion five seven two notes per right hand here b d and again ending with a solid half note chord so all you've got to get used to and this one is the fingering so the root position one chords are going to be four when we switch to the second inversion four chord, you're gonna use three. The five chord also is a five, four stretch. Now our playthrough will be left hand, arpeggios in inversions, same right hand. One chord, root position. Now switching to four chord, use finger three. First inversion moving down for the five chord. Stay there. Back up to one. Same as line one. One chord, root position. Now four chord, second inversion. Keeping the C's or the Do's where they are. Now we've got the five seven. Our final step is creating an accompaniment here on a lead sheet. So lead sheet is words only. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna transfer these chord symbols and put them on the words or syllables they would go on. So a way in a major no crib gets a four chord for a bed. 
the Le Little Lord G. By the way, I put the chord symbols, even if it's the same chord, I put it on the syllable that occurs on if I'm playing a rhythmic pattern, so it kind of keeps me organized. But technically, you wouldn't really have to write anything until the chord changes. Laid, okay, down. It's sweet. Okay. It's the same harmony as it was before. And so we've got the five seven. Uh, for this video, I'm going to show you the accompaniment only for the lead sheet. So that means your right hand will not be playing the melody. So what the right hand is going to play is the arpeggios, and the left hand will play the roots. So either single or octaves. So if we're using single notes, the root for the one chord will be five, the root for the five chord will be one, and the root for the four chord will be two. So I like to just write that in. This is non-standard notation, but then you know which finger your left hand is playing, especially when you transpose. Sometimes it can be confusing because you're using the opposite finger from what the chord Roman numeral is. So now the right hand will play the up and down arpeggios for root position. It's going to be one, two, three, and we'll move up for the four chord and the five chord instead of down. If we're going to play with a group of singers or instrumentalists, I like to give them their starting pitch, which in this case is so or G in the key of C, and then two measures of introduction, which would just be the pattern on the one chord. So it would sound like this. One, Okay, now I'm gonna do the inversions for the right hand. So for the one chord, we will have one, two, three, five. Four chord will be one, two, four, five. Five chord, plain five chord will be one, two, four, five. And the five, seven will also be one, two, four, five. We'll be scooting way down for that. Let's again give the starting pitch, little intro. The final step in this video is transposing these chords, these primary chords, the one, the four, and the five to a different key and using this lead sheet. So I like to find the highest note in the piece. In this case, it's G, pretty high for a group singing. So let's move this starting note down to C and have that be our highest note. So our lowest note would be this note, highest note would be this note. So what we've got to do is figure out, okay, so was the syllable on this high G. So in which key is C, so? So we just work backwards down the scale. So to fa is a whole step. Mi, fa and mi is a half step. Mi to re is a whole step and re to do. 
So in the key of F major, so is a C. So we transpose to F, our one chord will be F, four chord will be B flat, and five chord will be C, five, seven. We're gonna add that Fa on the top. So we can follow the exact same thing we just did, except now we're gonna be in the key of F. So the left hand gets set. We'll just do single notes, not octaves for the left hand. So now the left hand will play F for Do, or the one chord, B flat for the four chord, and C for the five chord. Right hand's gonna start a little bit lower for that one chord. One chord's gonna look like this. Four chord's gonna look like this. Five chord is gonna look like this. Five seven is gonna look like this. So again, we'll go through both ways jumping around root position for all the chords first, and then going over the inversions if you wanted to play a more compact version in the right hand. So now our starting note is so here, do, re, mi, fa, so, give that starting note, and we'll do two measures of introduction. One. positions for the alternate accompaniment. So our one chord is F. For the four chord in inversion, we're going to just change these two middle notes, then back to one, then going down for the five chord, back up. And then if we're going from one to five, seven, again, we're going to go down, but then the top note will be the C, which is so. So again, give the starting pitch. So C in this case, here we go. with this accompaniment on different pieces in 3-4. As always, I appreciate you watching and I hope you'll subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. There are five to go in the harmonization series and there's more than five different ways to harmonize, but I have five more for this particular series and they will be done before the end of the year. I love it when you write to me in the comments and let me know how your piano playing is going or if there are videos you would like to see. And as always, thank you for watching.